Hello, I am the new forklift driver. My name is Ivan. I'm very excited to be here with you today. Hey guys, welcome to Regal Metalworks. This is Cole. Hey, uh, today is Sunday. We're in here just doing a, a brief synopsis of what went on in the past weekend, the past couple days. And uh, didn't have time to film yesterday before I got out, which I really wanted to do, but the GoPro battery died uh, because I was shooting some time lapses on some projects we we're working on. So, but I just wanted to give you an update and show you what we have here. I finished the crampon, this guy here. This was powder coated. You can see in the other videos up here to the right. Uh, how we made these. <clears throat> I didn't include the plasma in any of it, um, just uh, forgot to do it. But we drilled and tapped these in the, on the machine, um, and this is actually how it all mounts. It's now powder coated black, so it bolts from the bottom, <clears throat> the pyramid bolts to the top, and then this goes for uh, a prosthetic limb for ice climbing. We have another one. <clears throat> this was originally we were supposed to, supposed to make an adapter plate just like we did for this guy here. But the problem with this is we had quite a bit of contours and things like that and it wasn't really a good place to bolt it. I do have a CAD file that I did develop it for aluminum that would bolt through the side and fit in here and fit all these contours and void all these areas. But honestly, for the amount of time it would take for me to machine all that, it was just easier to create a whole new one that's based solely for the use of the prosthetic pyramid. So we did that, we sent them out. The customer found uh, a product that they want to try and use with it. It's this grivel plate. And what these guys do, and part of the reason why they really want to use this one, because it already had one installed, is this allows snow to not pack up underneath. When the snow packs up underneath, then you got to dig it out and it, it becomes a hindrance. So this really allows, because it moves and it's rubber, it allows the snow to not pack up underneath. So we found this, this uh, manufactured design that we could adapt to our plate. And I went ahead and made some changes, which you can see kind of here. This was the original design here. And we didn't have an allowment for any of that. And it was, it was catching up here, as you can see these little things kind of slide back on. So we're a little wide there. So I went ahead and did this notch here. So it would slide back and I made sure that the back part here would Oh, you actually had to take some of this out so that the back clip, these clips would fit. So we did that. <clears throat> I left a little bit of room for the nuts that will go underneath here to, to take up so that this will be a, a very sturdy mount for that and you won't have any problems with it moving around. So we're going to send them out to the customer. I got four of these made for, for testing. They're going to Ecuador, I think, on Wednesday. And <clears throat> I'm not sure if he's going to take any of these with it. He has somebody that's going to utilize that that he wants to use for but these are the ones that they're going to use for Everest um, we have uh, two sets that we sent to and he's a double amputee they're, they're in uh, Nepal right now doing testing and the testing is for I believe it's May is when they're going to do Everest <clears throat> so we'll have this revision uh, rendition for them by then we might even have another uh, rendition version of them depending on what his results are when he gets back from Nepal but here you can see the, the designs of the, the first ice pick adapter plate. This was the first design that I had done. And uh, they requested it to be a little bit longer to add a little bit more weight as a counterweight for kicking, digging into ice. And um, you can see <clears throat> the drilling, tapping, and the powder coating on the, the final result that actually bolts to that. That's what we worked on this weekend. Did this all in the soft draws. You can see that in the prior video. If you're curious about that, give that a view, we appreciate it. Another thing I've been working on is this two by 72 inch belt sander, which I have a lot of this stuff cut out here. And I'll, uh, I'll get to this. I'm just, I'm just trying to fill in and try and get this done between other jobs for a customer because this is a lot of one off, you know, clean in the butt detail make. Um, <clears throat> I had to make this box tube, which I alluded to in the last video that had some issues with warping it seemed like when i got to the last two welds down here at the end it got tight in this area where i have marked off it got really tight and it was jamming up in and the whole idea of having this sleeve like this is so that you can replace it easily so you can put a different accessory on or a different wheel or, or whatnot so i got that dialed in and got that working 
I got to make another one of these. <clears throat> I was using these soda cans, folded over for I think it was like eight thou um, space the whole ways around, and um, it was perfect until I got to the last two welds. And um, I'm gonna try it again. I might do three. Try and take it from eight to what eleven? Uh, not eleven, twelve thou of spacing to see if that won't uh, you know fix the issue we have with that. That's kind of my my hold up on getting further done on this project. You can see I have some of the pieces. I tumbled all the steel because it was all uh, hot rolled, so it has this um, you know finish on it that is uh, not conducive for welding. Uh, it's called mill scale. So removing that <clears throat> allows the weld to be a lot better. You get a, a much better weld. You get that contaminant not mixed into your weld. So that that's a project one one project. The other one we got going on here is this uh, sign we did for this particular company. And they had very specific uh, design elements that wanted done in here. And normally when you cut out letters out of this like back plate, like the P, the center of that would drop out, the A, the R. But <clears throat> normally you would put a bridge in there so that that center wouldn't, wouldn't drop out, right? Like on your big R here, that would all drop out when you cut this big R out. So what we did is we're actually mounting this on a piece of vintage wood is we cut out the centers first, we kept those, and then I went back and cut some additional ones out. And then we went ahead and uh, we're gonna give them to the customer with the main cutout because they're gonna go ahead and fill that back in. They really didn't want to have the look of the bridges in there. So here's the sign that we got cut out here. And this is all out of the 16 gauge steel. And you can see like what I was saying. Normally this would drop all out, so we'd have to put a bridge in, but we went ahead and you know, collected it for them and, and printed a couple extra ones. I have a couple extra ones right here, so in case they would lose one or one not um, by the time that they go to install it. This was a real pain in the butt to make. We actually did uh, the, our first cut. We got all this all cut out and we got to the R section here and I was running my torch height controller on and for some reason it wasn't sensing the metal right and it crashed down into it, moved the torch and, and made a, 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 some some fine artwork, as you can see here. I don't know if you can quite see it up here. Sorry, my gantry's in the way. You can kind of see it right there. Needs to say, I was not a happy camper when that happened um, because you could see how much we already have cut out. And all we had to do was finish that R and then do the circle. And basically that scrapped that section of the steel, which is unfortunate. So I just had to go back and recut it all out. I turned my torch height controller off, did dry runs beforehand to make sure that the torch had enough of clearance between one side and the other, and we were able to get this job done. It's something I'm gonna have to revisit um, and try and dial in. I've been slowly dialing it in here over the past month, uh, so you don't have that issue, but sometimes it just sneaks up and bites you, and that's, that's the price of uh, working with a CNC plasma sometime. The torch height controllers can be a real pain in the butt, but, I have some video of some of that stuff that I'm sure I've put in or you just saw.
starting over and we have the torch head controller off. We're doing the last final cut here, which is a trace around the outside. But with the torch height controller off, we need to run a dry run here to make sure that our torch doesn't, in fact, contact the metal anywhere. Because the difference between the left side and the right side could be off enough that you're only talking 60 thou of clearance and you could hit. And so this way we can verify before we run the cut that we have the clearance. And then all we have to do, the white weights that we have on there helps keeping the uh, sheet metal from warping from popping up. I just, I couldn't see it right there, but... Yeah, it's fine because we picked up our Z height from here instead of over there. That's why it's straight before. Just stand there and watch that side, and if it starts coming up, you might have to push it down. Hopefully you enjoyed, enjoyed some of that. Not everything goes as planned. It's not as simple as, you know, you just draw it up and print it out and there you go, it's perfect. A lot of times there's a lot of involvement in getting the material uh, and the machines dialed in so you get the finish and result that you want. But it, it's, it's nerve wracking, you have to stay at it. And when you know you only have two shots to really do it or you're scrapped a whole entire piece and then you gotta get another piece, and which I didn't have any more 16 gauge. I only had ordered one sheet for this job. I knew I would have enough material, but we were able to get it done, and I'm really happy about that. Customer's happy. I should sent him pictures. He's ecstatic about it. He's going to go ahead and put a finish on it because we offered powder coating or a sanded finish. They want to do a vintage type of finish. They're going to weather the, the steel, give it some rusting and whatnot. I'm not sure how they're going to go about doing it. I'd be interesting to see the final product, but um, they were pretty pumped about it. They liked everything about it, so that's about all I got for today and for the week um, tomorrow we'll be starting on more fun stuff and thanks for tuning in and hope you enjoyed the content that we have here alrighty guys have a good one so bring your A game cause you know this party won't stop we could never run out of time sipping strawberry lime you know